Hi there, my name is Ushin Nunny, and this is Audio Talks on the Road with Harman Explore. And this episode, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the world of design with Christian Schlunder, the Vice President and General Manager of Global Design at Human Design and Harman International. Welcome to the podcast, Christian. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited. Fabulous. Okay, so first things first, for anyone who is not familiar with the name, what is human? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. So for many years, Harman had a very diverse and distributed design team. And three years ago, we pulled that all together into one organization. So be it user interface design, industrial design, packaging design, experiential space design, everything came together into one organization. And we called that human design. And the name human really refers back to who are we doing this for? Why are we doing this? And it's all about the people and the experiences that they have. So much at Harman, you're going to hear about the experiences per mile or experiences per moment. This is exactly what human does. We design for experiences for the humans that use the product in the end. Awesome. So the clue is very much in the name there. Thank you. It's great to know the background behind it. I didn't realize that. Yeah, we didn't want to be too cryptic. We wanted to be really direct and we really wanted to be blunt. When we did the research, we found that there weren't any design firms that were really embracing the end user so directly, even in their name. And we really uh, found that as an opportunity to own it. 100%. Well owned, sir. Well owned. And uh, have you had like, you know, we're, we're, we're talking to you after a busy week at Harman Explore. What have yourself and the team at Human been up to during the event? Yeah, that's a, that's a busy question, right? It's, it's, <laughs> it's a loaded question. Yes. Um, so we really, have, we look at all of these events in two ways. One of them is to share what we've been working on. Uh, we talk about the JBL portables specifically. It's a massive year for the release and the refresh of so many portable products for us. But we're also looking around to to learn from others and see and, and really see what other groups are doing. So for us, it's all about revealing, sharing, talking, being part of releasing the new portables. But and then on the other part, learning from all the other groups. Interesting, interesting. And you mentioned there the the portables. Uh, I mean, would you say that's one of the places where people can really experience the human signature design work in the latest products which have been launched? Or like, where else should they be looking to see that wonderful design work? Yeah, I, I think the portables is exactly where we can look right now. And you know, if if I could, I mean, going through a little bit of of why we did the refresh, where we went down that refresh. The refresh for us is about reconnecting. And every time we look to the end consumer, every time we look to the customer that'll be participating or using the product, Mm -hmm. we we look to how we can evolve their relationship. Mm -hmm. We go through trend awareness. We go through um, market research. We look at who the users are. And really 2021, we're seeing a refresh of youth, of excitement, of communication, believe it or not, of people wanting to be social with one another and being able to bring that to life in the new design language is the consistent thread that I hope everyone sees. Oh, fantastic. That's so exciting. And I think that spirit of rejuvenation is is just wonderful. And it's uh, so nice to see those new designs. Now, talk to us a bit about if there are any products in particular that you want to name check that you can maybe go a bit deeper into the design process. What's been breaking new ground at Harbin Explore? I'm going to jump to a very simple product. So I think that they're all fantastic. And I can talk to details on each of the different products themselves of where the design team has found a material to upgrade or a texture to upgrade or a fabric, a color. But I really personally lock on to the new JBL Go 3. I love the small, the portability, the texture, the way it fits into your hand, the little finger loop that allows you to hold it, but also interact with it. Um, The shock absorption of the co-molded silicone on the sides ensure that it's not vibrating things on your desk. You can clip it onto things. We have the clip directly, but this product really lets you take it with you. It epitomizes the JBL lifestyle of being on the go, living big, living bold, and it's in this tiny, elegant, beautiful product. I, I, I honestly could go on for the next half hour talking a lot about this. And it's, it's our smallest product. But to me, it really epitomizes everything we do in a very, you know, literally handheld way. 
And you can see those hallmarks throughout the entire line. So I can't pick much further than that because at that point, they all really exemplify the brand to the T this year. It's a The design team has done a fantastic job bringing that old, iconic, relevant audio experience into our customers' hands. Wow. And I love the passion in your voice when you're talking about the aspects of design there. It's <laughs> obvious you're a designer through and through. You really feel it. Yeah, I, th- I think the design team would probably wish that I pick one of the larger ones or, or a different product. <laughs> but it's, but it, it, I, I do get very passionate about that speaker because of its size and the power that it packs. And it epitomizes so much of what we do in all of our products. I, it, yeah. Yeah, this, I can imagine the design team listening to this and thinking, hey, what about the uh, so-and-so? Uh, but speaking of which, I'd like to just focus on another product because just the technology behind it is so new. And that's, of course, the Harman Kardon Radiance 2400 speaker system, which is using something called constant beam width technology. Talk to us a bit about how you go about developing this radically innovative product. You know, is there anything you can say about the design life cycle for something as new and innovative as those speakers? Yeah. Wow. That is, you know, as we were talking about a, a small product that you can hold in your hand and all the, the things that I have, the affinity of that design, as you mentioned, the Radiance 2400, that system, that it is pure elegance. It is to me, the epitome of a movement in a home. It blends in beautifully. The design team really brought to life an elegant, seamless interaction of what could be an overbearing product, right? In the in the wrong design hands, this would have been a large speaker mounted too high and in your face. But because of the technology, because of the engineering that sits behind that, our design team was freed from so many of the, the technical requirements of the past. And that hand-in-hand collaboration with the engineering team to get the drivers and the speakers as small as possible, get that technology operating in such an elegant sound way in a sound engineering process that they freed us as we think about audio transparency, as we think about directionality. That's all been removed from our, our requirements doc, letting our designers go to what is absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful, and why it won uh, a, a best of award for CES. I mean, it's an amazing product. It's absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. And your question was a little bit about the design part of it. My my big piece here is the engineering, that technology of the constant beam width. It freed the designers from some of the the hurdles and some of the requirements in the past to really bring to life an absolutely stunning and beautifully elegant what I call a movement piece, right? It's, it has to exist yeah. for a long time. It's expensive. It sits in your home. It's not a portable speaker that you're going to take to the beach and, and have some fun with and maybe replace in a couple of years. This is meant to exist with a presence for many years as a part of part of your home. It's It's a real amazing technology. The collaboration with the engineering team brought to life by the design team really exemplifies Harman's step-by-step approach to solving problems, leading with technology, leading with design, purely for the experience of the end user. Wonderful, wonderful. It's it's a really beautiful overlap that you capture there between aesthetics and pristine audio technology. And it's clear hearing about all that collaboration between engineering and design that this is not stuff that's being churned out. This is not the equivalent of fast fashion. This is something that's very mindful and thoughtful. And you really have a strong aesthetic value that sits underneath it. Now, it's interesting to just look at this in contrast to other areas of the audio market where things are being manufactured very quickly and are not really built to last in the same way. Do you think this is... uh, really indicative of your approach to design leadership. And what do you think design leadership means in terms of brand integrity and consumer loyalty? Yeah. um, I I will get very passionate about this too, because as it comes to a design leader and working with a team of over 200 designers globally, you know, we do need that North star at the end of the day. And the North star is always 
driven by the end user. It's always driven by the consumer, you know, hence the human in our name. But it's also driven by the brands themselves. And so many of the brands, as you were talking about fast movers, I break them out into three segments. It's fad, trends, and movement. And as you design for product, as you design for the end user, you need to think about its intended life cycle. So this is guiding that team to be very aware of the product, the brand, Uh the timelines in which those brands need to exist, and ensuring that the level of meaningful, I, I speak quite frequently on meaningful design and adding that level and layer of why do I care about this product? What, what does it bring to me as a customer? Why would I pick this part, this product over the competitors? That's meaningful. So I really work hard with the designers to ensure that they're decoding the brand, decoding the end user through research, um, through ethnographic research, not just the CMF research for colors and materials, but we also want to know how the users are going to evolve with the product and predict that. And if a product fits into the fad world, we need to be aware of what are the trends for the next six months. Most of Harman's brands live in the in the trends six months to you know two three years, and that's really that's our strength to focus on that. And we are definite trendsetters and leaders in that category. And the last one is movements. And we talked earlier about the Radiance speaker. That's a movement. So yeah. to us, Harman Kardon is a movement brand. And we like to think about them. I lead the team to really focus on what's the expected fit of this brand in time. Uh, So you just spoke there about the importance of the design and engineering overlap being very meaningful to consumers. And uh, you spoke about the user-centric approach to design. Do you think this makes your work, the work of human uh, in partnership with Harman, does it make it more sustainable in terms of business and consumer loyalty? Absolutely. I I can answer that question with that one word. Absolutely. (laughs) But I think you see it in brands, you know, in in our peer group, you see it in brands in our, in our market globally, the brands that listen to customers and then take that and truly listen, but also react to it, invest in what they hear, invest to what they're listening to the end user and bring that forward with that relationship between engineering and design. That's a push-pull relationship. It's love-hate, but it's truly push-pull. It's a very yin-yang fitting together. How do they support one another? How do they guide one another and lead one another? And this is where Harman's engineering design teams come together every single time. And it's represented in in the awards that we win. It's represented in how the market represents our success. Yeah, indeed. And uh, speaking of awards, I mean, it, would I be right in saying that you've won something like 382 awards in the past eight years alone? I don't know if that figure is up to date, but it's it's staggering. It's staggering. And it's truly, this is not done by any one person or any one group. It is definitely the entire design team, of about 250 people globally doing this work. And it is a, a conscious understanding of what the customers are looking for, of that trend setting, being mindful of what is meaningful to the customer. And Mm. we look to awards, you know, I mean, they, they, they definitely feel great and it's a real joy to have a conversation that's this positive with you. But, but, (laughs) but there's also something of making sure we're moving in the right direction as trendsetters. We are leaders to the industry. And when our peer groups come back and the industry is telling us, you are a leader. Here is an award. That's what we look for. We earn those by really taking the market into trend leader position and setting the benchmark for our competitors. And I believe that you picked up no less than 20 CES Product Innovation Awards. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. 20 awards. We're extremely proud of all of them. We talked about the Radiance. They also, we won a gold award for the Radiance itself. That is Outstanding. Many, many congratulations to you and the team. Those are jaw-dropping endorsements from the industry. That's super cool. But your focus, what you've been talking about again and again, as we've been having our chat, is the importance of the end user and how it's all about designing for humans. It's even baked into the name. What role does user research play in your design process and how important is for the final products? 
it's extremely, extremely important because if we're not asking the customer to share with us what they're looking for, we're going to be guessing. And we don't want them to tell us everything they're looking for, but we need them to give us the insights through that research about the lives in which our product will fit into. And that's where our leadership comes in as designers to really shape that and push that. And I want to take the opportunity to share that the research is a huge front load part. Design is the part in the middle that is the the noun and the action verb that gets so much attention. But ultimately, it's also about how we communicate the brands, how we communicate the product. So inside Harman, the human design group leads all of that. We have a dedicated team to research for user experience research, user interface design research, markets, trends, et cetera. And that team works hand in hand with our partner clients and the design team on every product that you see. And we start from the very beginning. We integrate the two teams together from the start all the way through to now bringing that designer into the brand communications team to help the marketing team communicate the brand and the design as authentic as possible. Wow, that's that's fantastic. That's a real insight into the setup at Human. That's super interesting. But I'm wondering, you know, obviously... You know, you're within the Harman ecosystem. It's huge. They're one of the global leaders in everything to do with audio. And, you know, Harman products occupy a broad price range from Bluetooth party speakers to the Go 3 to super luxurious Mark Levinson high-end hi-fi. As a designer and as a the design kind of entity within Harman, do you get to kind of leverage the entire ecosystem to get better materials, to provide, you know, economies of scale, to do things that are special in terms of your relationship with Harman? And, uh, you know, does that enable you to offer better value to the consumers? Uh, again, the answer there is absolutely. Like you, there's only a few companies that really have the ability to provide that to the design team. Mm-hmm. And we talked very early on about the uh, the Radiant speaker. There's a perfect example because of that scale, because of that engineering depth, but also the freedom of the engineering team knows exactly what they're bringing us. They know how to communicate with us. That creates an efficiency. That creates an affordance of what we can do and how we can push the design itself. Our team's also looking at it into the automotive market, right? So Harman Kardon is a very large brand for us into car audio design. So our team is bringing that knowledge, that understanding, bringing that into the home. We're bringing with the portable speakers, as you mentioned, we can bring longer battery life. We can bring greater interface design. We can bring a more interactive design because our engineering team is working with partners on such commodities as batteries and such parts as transistors and speakers themselves. So For us as designers, having that economy of scale is purely about driving our freedom as designers, knowing that the engineering, knowing that the background will be taken care of to the same quality that our design brings. Fantastic. And you you did mention the word authenticity a bit earlier. Um, I'm curious to know, what role does authenticity have in establishing trust with the consumer? And how do you go about baking it into the brand's design DNA? It's a great question. Thank you. Um, I'm a very big, personally, a very big believer in authenticity. And when we're working with the brands, driving that authenticity is how we build relationships. And, And even before the interview, when we were chatting a little bit, we talked about the world today and the world that we're in and building relationships versus maintaining relationships. And having an authentic relationship is one that grows. Having an authentic relationship with a customer, with a brand, is how you fulfill promises. And to us as the design team at Harman, it's critical to do that and to commit to that at every single turn. And where you see that is is truly in the portable speakers. And you see it with how those brands have grown, how those brands have grown into categories that we didn't know that we could go into, but we have authentic permission and authentic leadership place in new categories and in new arenas that many portable speakers haven't gone into in the past. So a bit bit of a personal anecdote. My wife is a designer and she has this incredible attention to detail. It's just absolutely uncanny. And I remember when we moved into a a place where we used to live in the UK, uh, I just took all of my vinyl collection and kind of 
shoved it into these multiple shelves and it all looked kind of messed up a bit, you know, but I, I didn't notice it, obviously, because it's just what my vinyl always looked like. And we were sitting there one evening and she looked at the vinyl and said, you know, this just isn't going to work. And I was like, what are you talking about? I didn't know she was talking about the vinyl. And she said, no, 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 this gives me a headache. Would it be okay if I colour coded it? And so she took out all my vinyl, colour coded it and put it back and it looked just beautiful. And she could sit there happily and look at it and it didn't give her a designer's headache. So I'm wondering, do you have something of this designer's gift as well? And uh, does it manifest with your in your work with human at all? Um, I, I appreciate that you called it a gift. Some might call it a curse. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. And, and I can share with your anecdote and your story. Um, my wife did that with um, our children's books. Aww. So uh, in, in a small little shelf, we had all the children's books. And uh, when we moved two years ago, she did the same thing. But for me personally, um, it's all about details. And it's the details, authenticity of the details. Are they appropriate to the product? Are they appropriate to what the product does? Does it have the right number of details? Mm-hmm. Are the details refined to the greatest level that is appropriate? For me, it's also about scale. I, I get a headache when things are out of scale, when you're holding something and you know it's a radius that really should belong on something that's five times the size or a part line that doesn't sure. make sense. My gift, as you called it, is this, I am all about details. I'm all about the details of scale and proportion. And how does it manifest itself? I think all of these gifts are what designers gift to the work that they do, right? I mean, this is, this is why we do that. And your wife has one, I have one, and I'm sure if we talked to another hundred designers, we'd find another hundred of these gifts. And that's, yeah. that is what design brings to Harmon. And as our team is doing their work, each of them is bringing their unique gift. And that's what makes Harmon's products so amazing. Superb. Yeah, it's, it's a collection of gifts or curses, depending on your viewpoint there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that our, our conversation was going to go that way about the word gift, but I really like that you, uh, you brought the, the attention to detail anecdote <laughs> into a gift. Yes. It's true. Okay, so the, the designer's gift is definitely a blessing, not a curse. I think we're in complete agreement there. <laughs> and um, I know we're, we're chatting during Harmon Explorer. We've just had a bunch of announcements, but is there anything in particular that you would like our listeners to be looking out for this year uh, that's going to come from the multiple award-winning team at Human? Yeah, it's a, a little bit of a trick question. You know, we can't start talking about the, <laughs> uh, you know, what's down the pipeline, but I can promise you there's There's a lot of great work being worked on as we look to the future and as we look to how these brands connect customers and connect audio listeners to the lives around them. Think about audio expansion. Think about category expansion. Think about new places to enjoy music. Mm. That's what you should expect from us. You should think about, you should expect nothing more than experiences that keep evolving and working with the end users to really amplify their life. That's what you should expect from us. Fantastic. Okay, an intriguing taster of what's to come from the team at Human throughout 2021. Watch this space for sure. I'll be looking forward uh, to the next updates and maybe some more awards during the year. Uh, So, Christian, thank you so much for your time. You've been very generous with your insights, giving us a look under the hood of the amazing award-winning design team at Human. But I would like to ask you a question we ask all of our guests, which is, what is your choice for the Audio Talks On The Road with Harmon Explore special edition playlist? Ah, this is a great question. And, and, and I enjoy music. And to work for a company that, that brings music to life is an honour. It, it's... I love what I do every day and to do it for a company like Harman really is the connection. That So I appreciate a question like this. And, you know, I believe that favorite songs is an evolution. It's a point in time again. <laughs> and right now, yes. um, this, is, this came on recently and I have locked on to it as this is my favorite for 2020. It is Pearl Jam's Just Breathe. Oh, And, and the, if you just take a look at, at the year itself, it just, as I heard it, it really resonated to everything that was true for 2020. And uh, yeah, my answer to that question, Pearl Jam's Just Breathe. 
Wow, what a fitting soundtrack to the vibe of last year. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Yeah, Pearl Jam are an incredible band. And uh, my own addition to the audio talks on the road with Harmon Explorer playlists. Uh, this episode is This Must Be The Place, Naive Melody by Talking Heads from an oh. album I still remember buying a million years ago in a clear vinyl. Oh, oh before you go, Christian, I know that t- the team at Human have put together this phenomenal playlist is so full of great new music and classics and everything. I was, I've subscribed to it a few months ago. It's genuinely impressive. Tell us a bit about the human playlist. Oh, I love that you, uh, that you caught that when we shared that. Thank you so much. Yeah. The team in New York put this together and it's a rotating ask in our studios where every quarter we ask a studio to put together an amazing playlist. And then we share them amongst the six studios. And it's kind of a rotating contribution to to building a network of one one group. And starting last uh, quarter, we made them public. So we started sharing that with everyone of just really soundtracks to design. So uh, we're going to update that next one. And uh, yeah, thank you for catching that. And we'll post a new one very soon. Fantastic. Kudos to the team. It's a brilliant playlist. I'm a playlist obsessive and those are truly impressive. Um, and I'm afraid that's all we've got time for so thank you so much for joining us for Audio Talks on the Road with Harmon Explorer Christian Schlunder that was so much fun absolutely brilliant thank you have a great day and listeners don't forget to subscribe to comment to share and to generally get involved we'll be back soon for some more fascinating Audio Talks see you next time